Greetings to True Family. Greetings 2K community at large. I am Quinzel Chestnut, and I'm the president of the Kingdoms League Association, KLA, the Vault League Association, VLA, and the Private Club, TPC. And today I'm going to be delivering the presidential address to the entire community, not just for Two True, but anyone outside who's aspiring to be a Two True member um, on the 2K platform. So that said, the purpose of today's address is to create what I call shared understanding. In any organization, the leaders of that organization have an obligation to build cohesive teams that are based on mutual trust. And you can't build trust unless you believe or value shared understanding at every echelon. Everyone has to have an understanding, not of what you're planning, but why. They need to understand the why. And today I, I, I have every intention of delivering the why behind the movements. So that like said, let's talk about the movement. Tuchu itself is more than just a brand. It's more than just a brand. Too true is in and of itself a movement. Now let's define the word movement. Let's define it. To move is to be in one place, point A, and to transport yourself or something to a different place, point B, to move. You, when you think about our organization or any of the leagues under our organization, KLA, VLA, or TPC, think about where we are now versus where we could be and realize that we are a movement. We are moving our organization in a direction that no one else can go. No one else can go. So we all have a choice. We all have a choice. You can either move with two true or you can move out of the way. Show only two options. Move with us or move out of the way. But if you choose to move with two true, that means you are choosing to move with meaning. Now let's define that word. What does it really mean to move with meaning? Is it just a slogan, something that's, that just sounds cool to say? Or is it something that we're actually thinking about every time we say something, every time we do something, every time we think something? Making sure it has relevance. Making sure we're not just, we're just trying to look pretty, but we're actually moving with meaning. We're actually doing things and putting systems in place that have meaning. We're taking steps of relevance that have meaning so that we can achieve the things that we want to achieve. If you want to continue to operate with us, you're going to have to move with meaning because that's what we're doing. And if you do move with meaning, if you choose to move with the meaning, you could be the biggest impact. This is more than just a game. This is a movement. So now let's talk about it. Let's talk about the thing that a lot of people don't like talking about. It's the dream. Why do people like talking about their dreams? Their fantasies, right? Off in La La Land, the things that they dream about but don't ever want to verbalize. Why? Why, why are people uncomfortable talking about their dreams? Because a lot of times their dreams feel so far from reality, they're afraid of being judged. Or they feel like it might be a waste of time because it's so far from, why, why talk about things that'll never happen? But what if I told you it could happen? What if I told you that the way we're moving, we could turn our dreams, our actual dreams into reality? That is the whole purpose of this presidential address is to make two statements. Number one, we are gonna put systems in place to turn our dream into a reality. And number two, we're gonna take the steps necessary to do it. So what is the dream? What's every 2K player's dream? Let's talk through it. What is what is what does the dream actually look like that we just don't even talk about anymore? We don't talk about it at all because we don't think it's possible. It's stuff like this. It's getting paid full time to do what you love to do, and that's play the game. That's to be thoroughly immersed in the 2K community and get paid for it full time to where you don't have to worry about anything else in life 
This can be your job. This can be what you do. Be a professional e-gamer. To serve in a community, to, to, to act and fulfill your role within an organization around e-gaming, around 2K. That's a dream. It's a dream. How on earth can we turn that dream into a reality? How can we put ourselves in a position where two true members, whether you're a player, a GM, a staff member, a director, or a leader, how can we put you in the position where you get paid full-time for fulfilling your role within two true? Is it possible? Can that dream turn into a reality? It's possible if you ask the right question. It's possible if you ask the right question to the right people. Up until now, we haven't been asking the right question. We haven't been sitting in the rooms with the right people who can help us turn our dreams into a reality. So now it's time to find out who those right people are. Because here's the reality. There are absolutely companies, organizations out there who will be more than willing to pay us, pay too true, or pay our players, our leaders, our staff, to do what we do best. And in return, we market their product and we market their service, whatever it is they do. If it's a car dealership, we're marketing their, the, you know, their car, you know, Chevy Camaro, uh, uh, Ford, whatever, right? If it's a food company, Golden Corral, whatever. Every organization you could possibly think of, every commercial you've ever seen on TV, I don't care who the company was, uh, uh, Tesla, the U.S. Army, for God's sake, has commercials. Uh, um, it doesn't matter what the organization is. Every commercial you have ever seen has been paid for by somebody's marketing department. Every organization has a department within it for marketing, for external affairs, and, and a specific amount of funds allocated to pay for marketing, to pay for commercials. So the reality is, there are organizations out there who are absolutely willing to pay. That's the answer. That they're absolutely willing to pay. But why would they be, why would they want us? Why would they want to use our platform? Here's the answer to that one. They could use our YouTube channel. They could use our director of broadcasting. Think about it. Diamond Lion. As good as he is with broadcasting, what if after every broadcast or after every podcast, he ends off and says, hey, this broadcast has been brought to you by Chevrolet. Stop by your local Chevrolet dealership and pick up your Chevy Camaro today, right? Something to that nature. And Chevrolet is paying too true $20,000 every three months. Just, just, to, just for that quick ad at the end of a, one, of our, one of our 2K League games. Think about it. Think about it. Just think about it. That's actual reality. Here's the issue. The real barrier is the only way organizations will want to do something like that is if they know a lot of people are going to see it. And in our reality, we only got 54 subscribers, as you can see right there on our YouTube channel. Nobody's paying for, nobody's gonna pay us for commercials. Nobody's gonna pay us for ads. Nobody's gonna pay us to market their brand or part product if only 54 people are going to see it. There's the reality. That's the reality. We haven't been asking the right questions. We have not been asking the right questions if we want to turn our dream into a reality. Check this bridge out. Let's talk about the bridge real quick. What purpose does a bridge serve? A bridge is designed to facilitate movement. There goes that word again. There goes that word again. But more importantly, not just any type of movement. The bridge is designed to facilitate movement by which whoever's moving shouldn't be able to move normally in that environment. If you look at this picture right here, normally cars can't move across water. It's not, it's not normal. But the bridge is there to help facilitate movement that's not normal. That's why the bridge is there. So now bring it back to our situation. That's our reality. 54 subscribers is our reality. Here's the dream. We 
We want to get paid to do what we love to do. That's the dream. So what does the bridge look like? What is the connection? How do we move from our current reality to the dream? And the answer is obviously we have to increase the amount of YouTube subscribers we have. That's it. That is it. That is a collective effort. If we go to from 54 subscribers to 100,000 subscribers, 200,000 subscribers, the day Two True's YouTube channel gets 500,000 subscribers, it changes the nature of the conversation. All of a sudden, this is no longer a dream we're talking about. It's not a dream. It's not a dream. It's reality at that point. You have organizations beating down our door, trying to get in, trying to, you got organizations competing with each other, competing with each other, trying to make sure that they're the ones who can get the exposure. They're the ones that can use us as another platform for them so that we can continue to market them because they know how many people are going to see it. That's where the lucrative deals come in. This is it. That is what the bridge looks like. Increasing the number of subscribers on our YouTube channel by any means necessary. So now we know what the bridge looks like. Let's talk about fortifying the bridge, making the bridge stronger. There's two parts to fortifying the bridge. There's your part, you, the community, two true community, the players, GMs, staff, leaders, you, the community, there's your part. And that's spreading the word. Spread the word. Support the movement. Get 10 people that you know, 10 people to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Five seconds to click a button, subscribe, bam. No reason why we, we can't go from, from 54 to 100 this week. This week, why not? What's stopping us? Spread the word. Get everybody talking about the one thing no one else is doing. But I will, I will fully admit, though, your part won't be enough. If I want you to go out and spread the word and talk about something, I, as your president, have to give you something to talk about. I have to. I got to give you something tangible to talk about, something that's unique, something that's rare, something that people have never talked about before because it's unheard of. It's unheard of. So let's talk about my part. My part is your president. Let's talk about the fact that for the first time ever, you're going to see somebody commit to something that no one's ever committed to. Here's my part. It's the reverse money lead. At the end of this year, whenever 2K24 uh, comes out, we're going to throw, we're going to host, I'm going to host the very first ever reverse money league. What does that look like? What does a reverse money league look like? Let's talk through it. A regular money league is where a player pays their own money, their own, their own finance, own finances to participate in a league for a shot, a shot, a chance to win more money back than they paid in. And in a regular money league, 10% of the individuals who pay, who pay to get in actually wind up winning more money back. Everyone else just really gambled on themselves and lost. In any organ, that's in any regular money league. Not everyone can win. Not everyone is going to gain in a regular money league, but in a reverse money league. Every single participant, the players, every single GM, every single member of the administration, every single person in a reverse money league gets paid. They get paid to participate. They get paid to play. They get paid to do what, they're, what they love to do. They get contracts, real tangible financial contracts to get paid to participate in a season. How? Where would the money come from? How on earth would the league be able to afford to pay everybody? 
I'm not necessarily a fan of sharing my personal business. I'm not. Um, but if I'm going to create shared understanding, if I am going to be open, honest, and transparent with my community, the community in which I am proud to serve, the day has come where I've had to, I'm going to have to share. So now this is the moment that I share with you the overall plan. For the first time in my life at the age of 35, here's what I can tell you. I am in a blessed enough position to donate my own funds, my own assets, my own finances to pay everybody. And that is my plan. It's a one-time thing, but this is my plan on for season three. My plan is to donate my presidential budget out of my own money, my own funds, 25K, $25,000 to facilitate the very first ever reverse money league on the 2K platform. Here's how that 25,000 will be broke down, broken down. We'll have six GMs, same thing that we have now, six GMs. Each GM will have six players on their roster. I'm considering increasing that to a window, minimum six, maximum eight. I'm considering it. Haven't made my mind up on that yet. We'll talk about that more in the offseason. But for now, six players per roster. Every GM out of my out of that $25,000 budget, let's break down what the numbers look like. Every GM is going to receive a, a signing bonus just because they were selected to be a GM. That's it. The fact that you were selected through this application process to be a GM you're going to get $500 as your own personal signing bonus. It's yours. That is 100% yours. However, I'll get to this a little later. You're not going to get the full 500 up front. You're going to get 100 up front before the season even starts. And then you'll continue to get 20% installments as the season progresses with your final installment, that final 20%, that final $100 at the end of the season after the championship, after the playoffs are, are, are over. I do that. I'm going to do that for a specific reason. Because I, I want to keep the entire league motivated. If I give you everything up front, you can just take your sign up bonus and run off and go play in the next league. Right. This is a community. This is a community. All right. We're going to do this the right way. We're going to do it smart. All right. We're going to use utilize our investment smart. But every every GM would get five hundred dollars, five hundred dollars signing bonus just because you were selected to be a GM. Here's what I can promise you as well before we move on to the rest of the numbers. Just because you were a GM this year doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be a GM in season three. The application process, the interview process will be solely based on trust. That is it. 100%. That is it. I have to be able to trust that you are going to serve your team the way that I try to serve our community. I got to be able to trust that. I got to be able to trust that you're going to present yourself as a servant leader and doing the, do the things that are in the best interest of your team, do the things that are in the best interest of your under team in the VLA, right? I got to, I got to know that you're going to take care of your players. I got to know, I got to be able to trust that your players are going to be able to trust you. I got to be able to trust you'll show up to your games on time. I got to be able to trust that you won't forfeit last minute. I got to be able to trust that you're going to stay committed throughout the season. I got to be able to trust that you won't act disrespectful in our Discord server. There's a lot of things about your leadership I'm going to have to be able to trust as I'm determining who those six GMs are going to be. Not everybody's going to be able to be a, a GM. There's only six of them. There's only six of them. They're going to be, they are going to be leaders of trust. Servant leaders of trust, I can promise you that much. So there, there's the $3,000 right there. $3,000 off top. Let's move forward. Each GM will also get another additional $1,000. However, that $1,000 won't actually belong to them personally. So the league will, the league will control the $1,000 in our merchant account fund, which will be controlled by a director of financial operations. But each GM gets their own pot of $1,000 that they are going to use to pay their players through player contracts. So imagine this. Imagine the best player you think there is. Let's say a GM says, you know what? I got $1,000, but I see that point guard over there. I feel like if, if I get that point guard on my team, we're going to win it all. 
and you offer that GM offers that player a six hundred dollar contract, and I'm offering you a six hundred dollar contract. Guess what? You got five other players you got to pay. You just use sixty percent of your team allocation funds on one player. This is why GMs, it's kind of like 2K Monopoly. GMs are going to have to be smart and judicious about the way they're utilizing their assets, about the way they're using, utilizing uh, the, uh, the, the funds allocated for their team. You got you to have to be smart. You got to think it through. You got to think it through. And what, what the, the challenge is really going to be, how do you construct a roster, a full-blown roster? Because it's BYOT, bring your own team, right? But how do you construct a full-blown roster and make sure everyone's happy and taken care of, but also still construct a roster that's talented enough to be competitive long term. You only get a thousand. You only get a thousand. And and I, I will say, I'll also say this: some GMs could potentially be tempted to do back backdoor backdoor channels, like hey, I'll offer you a thousand of my team application fund, or you know allocation funds, but you know, or I'll offer you know a two hundred. But also, you know, I got you. I got you. You know, like, you know, if we wind up winning, I, I, I'll give you 300 of my own. You know, I get my own, my own signing bonus. I'll give you 300 of my own signing bonus and we all going to eat. Hey, I'm telling you right now, if I find out that happens, all right, there will absolutely be punishments for that. Do not try to cheat the system. This is a one-time thing. Do the right thing. Use the $1,000. Don't try to promise anybody any other thing else. Right, stay within the boundaries in which we are laying out. I, I I am trying to facilitate a culture of fairness and equity across the board. Don't try to backdoor anything. The KLA championship will be worth five thousand dollars. The winning team will get five thousand. The league merchandise fund. So we've we've been talking about merch for a long time. We just haven't had the funds to 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 um to resource. But imagine this now: I'm dedicating two thousand dollars to our league merchandise fund. Everybody should get a hoodie at this point. Imagine that. Imagine a hoodie with like the 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 two two Trinity on the back, right? The the two true logo, and on top is the KLA, and then at the bottom on the left you got the K uh, the VLA. On bottom on the right you got the TPC. It's like the Trinity. The two two tr the all three. Right, you got your reverse money league, your regular money league, and your free league all on the you know logo, and that that logo is on the back, and then you got your actual team logo on the front. Imagine like the AMC Legends logo on the front, right, with AMC over everybody, or or the Black Pharaohs you know logo on the front, or the Spartans logo on the front, and then your gamer tag across the back. Man, like like just imagine that. That is coming. We I we are dedicating two thousand dollars. I know it's me, but I say we because we are a community. Two thousand dollars to our league merchandise fund, and then I, the my LEC. The, this the, this is my favorite one, and there's a reason why that number is bigger than any other number you see. I am dedicating nine thousand dollars to pay my administration, because what I'm going to be asking of them is much more than I'm going to be asking of you, and they understand that. They understand the sacrifice, the hard work and sacrifice associated with where this is going. They understand that they're not going to be able to be on the administration and be on the team at the same time. I've already laid out those parameters. It's one or the other. You're either serving up here on, at the league level as a director or a member of a specific department, or you're a part of a team and you're actually playing. It's one or the other. I'm the only one as the president. I'm the only one that gets the opportunity to do both, right? I can leave from up here and I can still play for my team. Yeah, hey, you, that, that's just how it is. All right, I, I can do that. Um, but I'm asking them not to. But because I'm asking them to sacrifice, because I'm asking them to put their love for the game aside and do statistics for me, broadcast for me, uh, spearhead external affairs and promotions, right? D direct my personnel management. Make sure that the trades look right. Make sure that the free agent uh, signings are correct. Make sure the player contracts are correct. It's because of that that they're absolutely going to get paid way more than anyone else, as they should. Uh, because you should pay for leadership. You should be compensated for your sacrifice. And I am dedicated to doing that. I want to make that very clear. I am absolutely dedicated to making sure that my staff is compensated.
players shouldn't be making more than GMs. <laughs> but I, I have a feeling a GM is actually going to try to pull that off, though. Right. But your players shouldn't be making more than GMs. Players down at level one who just get to sit back and play and get paid for it and live that dream. Great. But they shouldn't be making more more than the leaders. Right. The leaders, the GMs who are putting them in the position to succeed. And those GMs shouldn't be making more than the administrators who are serving the community. That is how I feel. And that's how I'm allocating my funds. You have five league paydays. League paydays will be everybody's day, right? Of course, when you well, let's say you play a game, right? You're, you know, you play a game, y'all lose or whatnot. Your team loses, kind of bummed out. Nobody likes losing. But payday tomorrow, everybody like getting paid. Everybody winning on paydays. Everybody win. Imagine this. Imagine, let's say, and I'm, I'm making this up. Let's say season three starts. Let's see. Uh, the game comes out September 8th. You got to give everybody time to make their builds or, or whatnot and, you know, get indoctrinated with the game. Let's say we kick off season three, October the 10th. I'm making this up. I don't know. That's I'm that's completely arbitrary. But I'm just making, I'm just putting, you know, uh, put, put a, a dart on the wall. October the 10th. Let's say the regular season starts on October the 10th. That means all the combines and all that had to happen beforehand. The first, the very first league payday will probably be around, October the 7th or 8th, right? Before the actual regular season starts. And on, on that day, the whole league gets paid. Everybody gets paid 20% of their signing bonus. Everybody. Well, everybody. Every player, every GM, every, every, every administrator, everyone gets paid that same day. My director of financial operations, what that person will be doing all day long is, is making the cash app transactions to every single member of our organization. 20% of your signing bonus. Imagine it. Today's payday. Today's payday. Then imagine about three weeks later, right? So season kicks off, let's say October 27th. You know, I throw another dart on the wall. Let's say that's the second payday. All right, so that's the second payday. Cool. Everybody getting paid. 20% of their sign bonus. That's going to happen five times total. To where by the end of the season, after the championship is over with, right? It's going to be on, it's going to be on the calendar. It's going to be publicized. You're going to know the days you're getting paid, right? And then the championship is over. The day after the championship, is, and or oh, excuse me, the day after the final award ceremony. Because after the championship, you got to have your award ceremony, right? And the, the day after the award ceremony is the final payday, final payout. Bam. Here's the thing, though. For I'm, I know some of y'all are probably already thinking, is this like a long-term thing? Are you going to throw a reverse money league in season four, season five, season six, or is this just a one-time thing? Let me answer. Let me just relieve that anxiety right now. This is a one-time thing for me. For me. I, this is the only time in my life I will ever put down 25K for something like this. I, but I'm, I'm going to do it with no regrets. I want to say that. Regardless of what happens in the future, I'm doing this with no regrets. This is what I want to do, okay? Some people out there probably will judge me. Like, you know, Mr. President, you're crazy. Like, there's no way I would ever do something. That's fine. That's you, right? Some people may use that 25K to put down on a house or a car or something like that. That's them. I am a gamer. This is what I love to do. I love to game. This is more than just a hobby for me. It's more than just a game for me. And I am choosing to use my assets to spearhead something in the gaming community that no one has ever done before. I am marking my name in history. That is what I am doing. I am marking and I'm asking you to support me. I am asking you to get behind this movement. I am asking you to, to, to help me develop a coalition so that we can move in a manner so that this doesn't end in season three. It doesn't have to end in season three. If we play our cards right, if we cross that bridge together, if we become so popular based off of what we're doing in season three, that we do gain the 100,000, 200,000, 500,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel who are dialed in to what we are doing. I absolutely think we can still hold the reverse money league in season four, season five, season six, and beyond because we're going to have companies paying us to do it. That is the dream that we are going to move into reality. That's it. That's the concept. That is the concept. And I need your help.
I need your help. I am willing to do my part. I am willing to put my money where my mouth is and do my part. I need your help to spread the word. Let's get as many subscribers on our YouTube channel as possible. So now let's talk about promises. One thing you'll know about me as your president, I promise you this much. I don't make many promises at all, but the promises that I do make, I keep. I don't break promises. I don't believe in broken promises. My father didn't raise me that way. That's the one thing I can tell, I can tell you for sure. I was named after my dad. I'm Quinzel Larry Chestnut II. I can tell you my father, Quinzel I, one thing that he always used to say is he's not a man of many promises, but when he does make a promise, you best believe it might as well be in the Bible. It might as well be law. He will not break a promise. I aim to serve the community in a manner in which there are never any broken promises, ever. So let's talk about my promises and then we'll talk about yours. The first thing I can promise you is that when we roll out in season two, understand this, when we roll out in season two, if you are loyal to us in season two, understand that season two is going to be a little more, a little more expensive than season three. You're not just going to be able to pay $10 and then quit. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to put forth some money if you're going to participate in season two. We're looking for your commitment. But if you're loyal to us in season two, without any incidents related to your conduct or your character, cursing, fighting in the Discord server, calling each other names, trying to cheat, use takeover glitch, trying to cheat, use a, a player, uh, an illegal player that's not on your roster. If you make it through all of season two with no hiccups, no questions about your character, you didn't have to get punished not one time. You didn't have to get fined not one time. You are automatically eligible. Your application is automatically eligible for acceptance into our reverse money league in season three. Automatic. That is a promise. That is a promise. I do not break promises. And then when season three starts, I promise you, you will be paid on time. In accordance with our procedures from our financial department, you will absolutely be paid on time. That's a promise. These are, these are my presidential promises to you. Now, I'm going to tell you, y'all going to make some promises to me as well. And believe it or not, there's going to be a specific portion of, of our population, larger than y'all might think, that are going to decide this reverse money league ain't for them. Because they're not going to want to change their ways. They're not going to want to grow up and mature. They're not going to want to transform their habits. They're not going to want to show exclusivity and commitment to us and our movement. And I am okay with that. I can promise, as a matter of fact, I am looking forward to their departure so that I can invest in the individuals who are willing to invest in us. So let's talk about the promises you're going to make. First and foremost, you're going to you're going to pledge your full exclusivity to our leagues and our leagues only. That's KLA, VLA and TPC. That's it. You are going to promise that you will not participate in any other leagues but ours. I'm going to tell you why. There was there used to be a time where I did not feel this way. There used to be a time I didn't mind. Right. Who am I to ask you to not play in any other leagues as long as you got the time for it? You know what? I am no longer interested in competing for your time or competing for your compliance. There's two, there's two parts to why exclusivity does matter. And I've learned my lesson from this. The first one is time, the second one is compliance. But let's talk about time. What's, the, what's actually the main reason a lot of teams show up late to their games or blow their games off or never lock in times for their games? What's the, what's the actual real reason? Is it because they have personal things coming up? Sometimes it is. But I will tell you, for, there are far too many times where people have flat out admitted Nope, I got another game. We got another Money League game coming up here in about 15 minutes. We can just play all later. And the game never gets played. At that point, I am competing. As your president, I am competing for your time to have this game played and broadcasted on our platform so that we can get more viewers and more subscribers. I am competing for your time with another league. I'm no longer interested in competing for your time. If our league says that you have a game at 9 o'clock, on the 17th, and you're not there because you're playing in another league game, I can promise you that's not exclusivity. 
and you'll be removed. You're going to pledge your exclusivity up front during the application process. Period. End of story. So that's the first thing is your time. The other one is your compliance. Here, here's, an, here's another thing that that's competent. I'm not interested in competing for your compliance. If we tell you that on your courts, when you hit gold, that you need to hit gold, number one. Right? So, so that's the first thing. You need to hit gold so you can put the logos we have designed on your court. Your pro-am team needs to be in a gold status so you can put our logos that we have designed for you on your court and your walls. That needs to happen. Make it happen. And the reason you decide, uh, yeah, but I don't really feel like, you know, try, go trying to get ranked games. I don't really feel like it, man, whatever. All right. I don't really feel like I, I, I'm more, I want to just do tens, you know, private matchups. I'd rather go to rec. I'd rather you know, play my career, whatever, doing everything but complying with what we're asking. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't trust that. Cannot trust that. I'm not going to, I'm gonna, not going to compete for your, your compliance, but when it comes to these other leagues though, so let me tell you where, the, where, where this is going. Um, if we're telling you, you need to put KLA on your court, but you got another team, another league's name on your court or another league's uh, uh, logos on your court, right. Or your uniforms, are not one of the teams that, that we, right, we said your name is AFC Legends or your name is Top Legion or your name is Spartans or your name is Black Pharaohs, yet you come into a game where we're broadcasting live and we see LSU or Kentucky or, or something not related to, to what, we've, what we've approved on your court or on your uniforms, whatever the case may be. That is a problem. That is an issue, right? And now we are competing with another league for you to comply with our rules. You're choosing their rules and their compliance over ours. I'm not interested in competing. I'm not. Not if, I, if I'm putting money in your pocket, I'm not about to compete for your time or your compliance. Either commit to me, commit to our movement, right? Two truths movement or move out of the way. There's, there's, no, there's no ambiguity there. There's no if, ands, or buts. Uh, that is as, as real as I can be. And I am okay, I promise you. We are okay if you decide that's asking too much. There are going to be some people who don't want to change, who don't want to just simply be exclusive, and they want to play in four or five different money leagues all at the same time. That is, I promise you, no one's going to judge you. No one's going to judge you for that. No one's going to judge you for that. The second thing is uh, our conduct, our conduct in the Discord server, our conduct in DMs, right? Our conduct in general on how we treat each other. You are going to promise your full respect and empowerment of everyone in our circle. Listen to me. I'm not even just talking about myself. I'm not saying, oh, I'm the president, so you can never talk to me or disrespect me. It's more than just me. It's my administration, it's my GMs, and it's my players as well. It's us, our circle, our community. There will never be a time where I will be okay with, and you'll see this when the investigations uh, regulations come out in the off season. I can promise you this much. In the event you decide that you're going to throw a personal attack or call somebody a name or get vulgar or anything like that, right? And you get caught doing it and, uh, in any of our platforms, I can promise you your punishment will be adjudicated swiftly. Swiftly. Fast. I, I, I guarantee it. Guarantee it. I won't tolerate it. You're going to promise me, promise me, regardless of what your habits were in the past, that we're not going down that road in, in the future, not not if I'm putting 25k in your pocket, absolutely not. Nope. Cursing, vulgar language, and sensitive language out the window. Out the window. We are getting ready to turn our organization into a kid-friendly environment because we're getting ready to have a lot of eyes, a lot of eyes on our organization. Think about it. Think about the bridge. Think about how many subscribers we're getting ready to get. And think about what the audience really looks like. That I just, I just want you to sit. Just think, who's really subscribing to our YouTube channel and watching us play 2K for fun and get paid for it? Is it the 65-year-old, you know, you know, sitting in his couch? Or is it the 12-year-old who loves to play 2K as well? We're getting ready to turn our organization into a kid-friendly environment. How we treat each other matters. How we conduct ourselves matters. We're getting ready to clean up our act. That is a promise. If you're not willing to make that promise, if you're not willing to move with us, to move out of the way. So what are the ways that we can destroy our own bridge? Destroying the bridge. 
The same way we can make the bridge stronger, there are three ways we can destroy the bridge. There are three ways we can absolutely, well, technically two ways. There are two ways, actually, that we can, we can destroy the bridge and prevent ourselves from getting endorsements or sponsors. Or if we have endorsements or sponsors, lose them instantly. Instantly. The main way, I'll tell you the main way, is when we display a culture of flawed character, when we treat each other with disrespect, using vulgar language, using racial slurs, using uh, all those things that you could possibly think of, right? all those, those, those words you could possibly think of, by creating a culture where that is normalized is the quickest way we'll never reach. It don't matter how many, we can, we can have a million subscribers on our YouTube channel. When we've normalized using that type of language, I can absolutely guarantee you, if we have the endorsements, we'll lose them like that. Ask Tiger Woods, ask Tiger Woods. All those endorsements, the moment he got caught messing around on his wife, what happened? Like that, and it was, it was swift, swift. Don't think for a second, that you're going to get endorsements just because how good you are at the game, even though that does matter. Because people pay to see talent. People not paying, to, which brings me to my next, my next one, Disp displaying a, a culture of low competence. Where we, we just, we're just not hoopers. People get blown out by 60 every game. That's not competition. People are going to want to pay to see competition. That matters. It absolutely matters. But character matters first. Let me make that clear. Character matters first. But we can't display a culture of low competence. We have to know what we're doing. At the, at the individual level, at the GM level, and in our administration. And we also have to be committed. We have to display a culture of, of commitment. The, the moment we display a culture of inconsistent commitment, teams not showing up on time, we're, we're three weeks behind on our own stats on our official website. Imagine that. Imagine someone who's really considering endorsing us. Okay, I see your, your YouTube channel looks good. That looks nice. Let, uh, let, you have a website? Let me see your website. And our website is three weeks behind on the statistics. Three weeks behind. Now, you know what? Y'all, 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 you know, do what you got to do. And, what, you know, we, we, can, we might have a lucrative, di lucrative deal for you next year. Um, but it looks like y'all don't have it together yet. Not that we didn't have the competent people in the right place. We just didn't have a commitment. People got lazy on us. Nah, we need all three. We need all three. We can't afford for it. For the three C's of trust, because that's what I call it. Character times competence times commitment equals trust. Those are the three C's of trust. If we have the, if we display the three C's consistently, our bridge will not be destroyed. It will only be fortified. It will only be fortified. This concludes my presidential address. Too true is moving. Move with us. Move with meaning. Let's turn our dream into a reality. Let's move from the current reality to the dream that no one's talking about yet. Let's get them talking. My name is Quinzel Chestnut, and I approve this message. <laughs>